guys once again welcome back to hoi navigos today we are back again with our chat work concepts today our topic is spherical triangle so we are going to discuss about spherical triangle and things related to it as we all know a spherical triangle is different from normal triangle these are having three sides and uh, we have three angles for spherical triangle and there are more difference so let us see what are the spherical triangles and its conditions in first let us discuss about the angle case any angle inside spherical triangle should not be more than 180 degrees that is the first condition sum of three angles of any spherical triangle should not be more than 540 degrees as we said we have three angles for a spherical triangle sum of all three sides uh, all three angles of a spherical triangle should not be more than 540 degrees now next point let us see about the sides as we said any side of a spherical triangle should not be more than 180 degrees similar to the case of angle angle also should not be more than 180 degrees similarly the side of a spherical triangle also should not be more than 180 degrees now in case of sum of three sides of any spherical triangle should not be more than 360 degrees in case of angles we said that sum of three angles should not be more than 540 degrees in case of sides sum of three sides should not be more than 360 degrees and the next point is when any angle or any side of a spherical triangle is 90 degrees it is called as a quadrilateral spherical triangle that means any of your angle or any of your side of a spherical triangle is 90 degrees it is called as your quadrilateral spherical triangle next point is to solve a spherical triangle we have two formula that is cosine formula and using your napier's formula or your napier's rule so let us see what is the condition to either decide to use your cosine formula or your napier's rule so for your cosine formula to use a cosine formula any two sides and an including angle is known in the question you should be having the values of any two sides and an including angle then only you can use your cosine formula or else we have one more condition in which when all three sides of a spherical triangle is known that means if you know all three sides of a spherical triangle or if you know two sides and an included angle you can use your cosine formula next comes your napier's formula that is you can use it when you have having a spherical triangle that is a quadrilateral spherical triangle that means your angle is 90 degree or your side is 90 degree so now let us see detailed into it first thing you have your cosine formula suppose this is your spherical triangle you having angles and capital a capital b and capital c and you have three sides small a small b and small c so the cosine form formula states that cos of any angle any of the angle can be a can be b can be c is equal to cos of opposite side minus cos of adjacent sides that means cos of adjacent side 1 into cos of adjacent side 2 divided by sin of adjacent sides that means sin of adjacent side 1 into sin of adjacent side 2 so this is your formula of cosine formula let us look into an example so that you will get to know about it better for an example let us consider this as an angle so cos of angle means cos of a is equal to cos of opposite side opposite side to this angle is this small a so your opposite side is cos a minus next is cos of adjacent sides so to this angle adjacent sides are small c and small b so that means your equation will be cos a minus cos small c into cos small b divided by now you have your sin of adjacent sides your adjacent sides are of angle a is small c and small b so that will be sin c into sin b so this is how you go ahead with your cosine formula now let us look into our important napier's rule so as we said this rule applies when a spherical triangle is a quadrilateral spherical triangle that is when one side is 90 degree or one angle is 90 degrees so we said there is two cases when one side is 90 degrees and when one angle is 90 degrees let us divide it into two cases case 1 as one side being in 90 degree case 2 as one angle being 90 degrees we have two spherical triangles in this spherical triangle we have a b c as angles capitals small letter a b c as your sides and your side a small letter a is 90 degree so this case is one side being 90 degree that is a being 90 degrees 
and in the second case you have the case two on angle being 90 degrees you have the spherical triangles in which your capital a is 90 degree so let us see how we go ahead with both of this this circle in which you dis divide your portions into five parts that is your napier circle in which you have the middle part that is your 90 degree part in this case side being 90 degrees your small letter a is 90 degree and in this case your angle being 90 degree that will be your mid that is a is equal to 90 degrees next thing we need to fill this napier circle to use your napier's formula so let us see how to fill this napier circle what we need is we need to move clockwise to fill this napier circle this is clockwise similarly if you consider this a 90 degree we need to move clockwise that is this direction clockwise clockwise so we consider a is equal to 90 degree so if we move clockwise what is the next that is your angle b so you need to move filling your napier's circle in clockwise direction so it will be angle b here that means if you move 90 degree first come b so b here next thing what next you have is small letter c that will be 90 minus c that is how in this napier circle what is main concept is that the two large portions that will be without 90 degrees minus that is straight that angle and the three bottom segments small segments are having 90 minus that particular angle what we are having getting in your clockwise direction so let us film further next thing what we have is angle as we said you have angle as a so this will be a minus 90 degree and the next thing what we have is b so that will be 90 minus b and the next thing what you have is c that will be your upper segment so it is directly c it is c so we filled your side being 90 degrees napier circle so now let us fill angle being 90 degree napier circle similar way you have a is equal to 90 degree you have a if you move clockwise you need to fill clockwise your napier circle also you need to get the values from your spherical triangle clockwise so from a if you move further it's b coming so you apply your b over here upper segment so no 90 minus this is b next thing what you have is c and it is lower segment so it is 90 minus c and next thing what you have is a so that will be 90 minus a next thing what you have is b 90 minus b next thing what you have is small letter c so that will be it is upper segment so no 90 minus it is straight the angle c two things what you need to observe in side being 90 degrees and angle being 90 degrees everything is same but only in this case your log lower segment if it's side being 90 degrees you will be writing it as a minus 90 and if it's angle being 90 degrees it is 90 minus a that is the only difference you have just everything is same clockwise and anti-clockwise uh, clockwise and the spherical triangle also being clockwise so this is how now you have your napier's formula so let us see what is napier's formula this is your napier's formula that is sine of any mid part is equal to cos of opposite sides that's equal to cos of opposite one into cos of cos of opposite two similarly sine of any mid part is equal to tan of adjacent sides in is equal to tan of adjacent side one into tan of adjacent side two so for this for your easy understanding if you're using cos in your sine of mid part is common in both case if you're using any any of the formula if you're using cos c it's o you will be having opposite sides that's o if you're using tan a adjacent you're using adjacent sides so that is how you easily remember the equations so let us see how we use these equations in your napier's circle so we need to know what is the mid part what is an opposite side what is an adjacent side your mid part is nothing but any segment that you select you can select c you can select b you can select 90 minus c anything any side that you select that is your mid part suppose if i select c that is my mid part then my opposite sides will be a minus 90 and 90 minus c that is not adjacent to your mid part and your adjacent sides will be 90 minus b and b that which is adjacent to you 
So this similarly here, if you select B as a mid part, your adjacent sides are small c and 90 minus capital C, and your opposite sides are 90 minus capital B and 90 minus small a. So these are your mid part, opposite sides and adjacent sides. To solve your Napier's rule, you should be knowing some parts from your question. Let's see uh, if you know B and if you know A minus 90 and you need to find 90 minus B. So if you look into it, you can take B as a mid part and 90 minus B and A minus 90 is your opposite sides. So applying your opposite side formula of Napier's rule, you have sine of mid part that is sine of B is equal to cos of opposite side is A minus 90 into cos of 90 minus B. What you need to find is 90 minus B. You know B, you know A minus 90. So you can easily substitute the equation and you can get the value of 90 minus B. That will be sine of B divided by cos of A minus 90 will give you cos of 90 minus B by, by just transferring the equation here. So this is how you go ahead with your Napier's rule about one side being 90 degrees and one angle being 90 degrees and you solve your spherical triangles. I hope you guys understood. If you have any doubt, put in comments. We will get to you. This is Ahoy Navigo signing off.